हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंग्लिश लिटरेचर पाठशाला नाउ आई हैव स्टार्टेड वंस अगेन अपलोडिंग द वीडियो लेक्चर्स फॉर यू सो टुडे द टॉपिक व्हिच आई हैव सेलेक्टेड इज द एज ऑफ रोमांटिसिज्म this is one of the important topics of history of english literature and uh, this is prescribed in various universities uh, uh, somewhere at ug level and somewhere at uh, uh, post graduate level now let us now begin the topic uh, the age of uh, romanticism now before i discuss the topic you know uh, i am reminded of a famous line by alfred lord tennyson which he used in his poem mot d arthur now the line is the old order changeth yielding place to new and god fulfills himself in many ways lest one good custom should corrupt the world now the line the old order changeth yielding place to new is a very significant in this context because uh, you must have studied elizabethan age jacobian age carolingian age uh, restoration age neoclassical age and so on why you know uh, uh, is there the discontinuation of a particular age and then the beginning of a new age maybe uh, this line is very apt we had elizabethan age then uh, we had jacobian age we have carolingian age and uh, so many uh, periods you know in the same vein we have the this the age of romanticism in the closing part of the 18th century and the early part of the 19th century now uh, when i meet my uh, classes there are certain lines which i often quote and i also enjoy because the lines are very uh, mesmeric very you know alluring uh one of the lines my heart acts and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though hemlock i had drunk i think uh, you must have recalled uh, the poem from which uh, these lines have been taken uh ode to the nightingale by john keats now one uh, line oh lift me as a wave a leaf a cloud i fall upon the thorns of life i bleed uh, again uh, i think uh, uh, you are able to uh, you know recollect the lines the source ode to the west wind by p b kshedi now uh, off quoted lines and off quoted stanza as well uh, which i frequently use i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze obviously you have wordsworthian touch in this stanza and the source is the daffodils now uh, you see when we uh, read these lines really they are so uh, inspiring so mesmeric so lyrical that we are actually rapt while you know uh, uh, reciting these uh, these lines these lines are written by the great romantic poets you know the period which i am going to discuss now the age of romanticism which we generally uh, call romantic age covers the period from 1798 to 1837 so whenever you are going to discuss the age of romanticism or the romantic age you remember this period 1798 to 1837 now uh, you see uh, when you just go to the uh, historical uh, background because uh, generally you have the periods of english literature after the name of uh, kings and queens that are monarchs now this period uh, that is the age of romanticism uh, that is from 1798 to 1837 it covers the last you know 22 years of the reign of george uh, 3rd 
and the reigns of George IV that is from 1820 to uh, 30 and William IV that is 1830 to 37. So remember these three monarchs George III, George IV and William I. So this you know the age of romanticism uh, you, you see flourished during uh, this period. Now on the first day of uh, the new century that, that is January uh, 1st 1801 uh, there was a very significant move in the history and that Ireland you know was united with Great Britain to form a common country called the United Kingdom. Now two uh, progressive laws uh, were uh, you know passed in the reign of William IV. Uh, one is because these are the actually some important dates also important events also which you must remember because you know they are very often asked in competitive examinations also and if you are just writing them in your answers so your answer will become very witty so there were two very important uh, you know moves uh, uh, or the laws which were passed during the reign of William IV one was the reform act of 1832 now this date again is very significant significant reform act of 1832 um, uh, you know through which franchisee uh, franchise to the middle uh, uh, classes were given and the th and the second was the act of abolishing slavery now these were the two important you know uh, laws which were passed during the reign of um, uh, you know william fourth now uh, uh, just coming to uh, this the age of romanticism or the romantic age uh, this is known by two names one is romantic revival and the other is romantic revolt now you see uh, when you say it is romantic revolt meaning is that it revolted against the neoclassical tendencies of the time because the neoclassical writers were known for their mechanical style, for their rules and regulations, for their decorum, for their didactic elements and all that. So, you know, it revolted against the neoclassical, you know, tenets and that is why we call it romantic revolt. Now, when we say uh, romantic revival, it, it means uh, it, uh, that romanticism was not new actually in, in 19th century. It was uh, already there in Elizabethan age. So what did they do basically? These poets of the 19th century, they revived the romanticism of the Elizabethan age. Romanticism in 19th century was you know strengthened reinvigorated in the hands of the romantic poets and that is why it is romantic revival it revived the romanticism of the elizabethan age now it must be remembered that uh, you know the the essence of uh, uh, romanticism as i have just told you that the essence of the romanticism is actually you know um, spontaneity uh, and uh, something which is unaffected and this you uh, can find in the in the plays of the elizabethan you know dramatists because they were not governed by you know rules and regulations by by the critics so uh, the poets of this particular age that revived the romanticism of uh, the Elizabethan and that is why it is called romantic uh, revival now as you know that you know neoclassical age uh, covers the period from 1700 to 1798 and then we have the beginning of the romantic age from the 1798 onwards that is till 1837 but you know uh, and this you know uh, neoclassical age can be subdivided into, into three uh, parts that you know if you say the romantic that neoclassical age is, is from 1700 to 1798 then you can subdivide it and you can say that from 1700 to 17 1945 it is the age of uh, Pope or the Augustan age and from 1745 to 1785 you, you can call it the age of Johnson or the age of sensibility now when Johnson died in the year 1785 then we have actually the uh, starting point of the uh, you know romantic age so sometimes we take the period 1785 also instead of 1798 now uh, French Revolution broke 
out in the year 1789. So sometime we take this date also as the beginning point of the Romantic uh, movement. So it can be from 1785 to 1837, it can be 1789 to 1837 and it can be 1798 to 1837 because 1798 is the publication date of uh, lyrical ballads. Now, uh, you know, how does it emerge? There are two uh, very important influences. Uh, one is the French Revolution. And I think uh, this is a historical event. All of you are familiar with this. The French Revolution was a, a period of time in France when the people overthrew the monarchy and took control of the government. Uh, it lasted, you know, uh, 10 years from 1789 to 1799. It uh, began on July 14, 1789, when the, you know, revolutionaries stormed a prison called the Bastille. The revolution came to an end in 1799 when a general named Napoleon overthrew the revolutionary government and established, you know, French consulate uh, with Napoleon as leader. Now, uh, the darkest period of French revolution is called reign of terror because there was a lot of massacre and bloodshed which lasted from 1793 to 1794. Now this French revolution uh, completely changed the social and political structure of uh, France. It put an end to French monarchy, feudalism and took political power from uh, Catholic Church. It brought uh, new ideas of fraternity, equality and liberty. Now French Revolution had a deep impact on you know romantic poets and there is a very famous line which was uh, said by William Wordsworth uh, you know rega you know in context of French Revolution because he was also very much influenced by that though later on he got frustrated uh, by this uh, you know revolution due to massacre and bloodshed he said bliss was it in that dawn to be alive but to be young was very heaven. So, you know, uh, this French Revolution had a very deep impact on, uh, uh, you know, the Romantic poets. And uh, you see uh, um, this when we say uh, the concept of the return to nature by William Wordsworth. So, we are reminded of Rousseau's concept of back to nature. Now, second important uh, influence is of the uh, pioneers of the Romantic uh, movement or we can call precursors of the Romantic movement. Or, uh, or the transitional poets. If you read the poetry of, you know, Thomas Gray, Robert Burns, William Blake, Chatterton, Percy, and so on, then you, you find out that, that, you know, there is actually, you know, the, the seeds of romanticism were sown by these, these poets. Though in the, in the poetry of these poets, we have some neoclassical elements also, but they, uh, uh, you know, uh, started showing the path to the coming poets. Now, if you read Elegy of the Country Churchyard, there are certain romantic elements, neoclassical elements are also there, but you know, these poets showed the path to the, uh, to the romantic poets and, uh, and that is why when we say precursors of the romantic movement or when we say transitional poets, we, we, we mean that those poets uh, in whose poetry we have the blend of the mixture of uh, romantic, romantic qualities and the neoclassical qualities and that is why why a critic calls them a romantic snake in the classical grass. Now, uh before I come to the important features of Romanticism, let me uh, tell you some definitions of Romanticism. There is a book uh, by F. L. Lucas called The Decline and Fall of the Romantic uh, Ideal, uh, which was published in 1948. Now, this book actually contains 11,396 definitions. There are so many definitions of Romanticism, but uh, there are some uh, significant uh, definitions, striking definitions through which you can find out the important characteristics of the romantic uh, mo uh, this romanticism now victor hugo calls romanticism liberalism in literature so if you're going to define romanticism you can define romanticism in the words of victor hugo as romanticism is liberalism in literature now walter pater defines romanticism as an addition of 
the strangeness to beauty so this is the definition by walter peter that romanticism is an addition of strangeness to beauty now what's denton describes romanticism as renaissance of wonder so this is the definition which is given by um, you know, watts denton that it's a renaissance of wonder now gate uh, gate just pronounce it properly uh, he said that uh, romanticism is disease classicism is health now uh, there is another critic phelps uh, uh, he defines romanticism as a, re a reawakening of the Middle Ages. So this is the definition of the romanticism by Phelps that it is a reawakening of the Middle Ages. Now one critic called Professor Herford. Professor Herford uh, defines romanticism uh, as an extraordinary uh, development of sensibility by which things acquire new meaning. This is the definition by Professor Herford that romanticism is an extraordinary development of sensibility by which things acquire new meaning. So uh, what we have seen that Hugo defines as liberalism in literature, Pater defines it as addition of strangeness to beauty, Watts Dunton defines it renaissance of wonder, Gaiti uh, defines it romanticism is disease, classicism is health and uh, then uh, Phelps uh, uh, you know, uh, defines it that it is reawakening of the middle ages, Professor Herford says the romanticism is an extraordinary development of sensibility by which things acquire new meaning. So when you read these seven eight definitions then uh, you know you can come uh, to the uh, you know you, you can find out some important features of romanticism. So so in my next video, I'll discuss the important features of romanticism. Thank you very much.